This is AM Live. Woohoo! See that? Yes, that's how fancy we are. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday morning. You've made it halfway through a very short week, okay? So do not worry, okay? Friday will be here shortly. It'll be the first of the month. Friday is April Fool's Day. I want to just plan something huge. I think we should do something to our boss, our managing director, Linus Kaikai. I'm planning something. Yeah, so you guys give us your suggestions. Anyway, I hope you all are having a good morning and I hope you've woken up feeling great. We have a very interesting show. I've been avoiding this subject. I'll be very honest. I've been avoiding this subject because I am a culprit of the other side. This is not my hair. <laughs> right, yes, this is not my natural hair. I wish it was, but it is beautiful hair. I can't even tell you how I got it. Yeah? But um, that actually forms the basis of today's conversation. We're talking about going natural, which is a huge thing right now in Kenya. Women are transforming. Guys are going for their kinky, their afro, their natural hair. They're going back to their roots, and it is just a wonderful phenomenon. Is it a fad? Is it not? We're, of course, going to talk to somebody who can give us a little bit of information on that. But, guys, what do you think? I, I want men to come in on this because I know that there's a group online men against weaves entrepreneurs or whatever they're called i know you guys huh and let me just be very honest i do actually have male friends who have explained this to me historia weave munechukia i know why because i think for majority of men the fact is it smells <laughs> weave smell hmm? i love weave story for navy i see chicks in town at lunch. Let me tell you, those are the two things, ladies, that irritate men. All right? It's not the weave. It's not. It's the upkeep. If you're hugging someone and you stink, mm -mm, that ain't cute, girl. Mm -mm. Got to wash, shampoo, and condition. Smell nice. All right? And that's the thing about stuff that's not natural. It does have uh, an inclination to, like, pick up. You're walking in tow, chips, smoke from matres people passing you it's so hot sweat it's really not a, a good thing okay so regularly actually wash your hair even if it's a weave or not and just make sure if you if you want to scratch huh just go to a corner with an inning yeah mukuha yeah a needle something this thing of gonga gonga in yourself we need to stop so i do actually understand where men are coming from but here's the thing gentlemen we have options now all right and for the ladies who are going natural we congratulate you but we are out there we are proud of how we look we love the options that are out in the market but i love this fad guys if i show you my natural hair it's one of those whoosh, you would even see me huh it's, i look like a lion so let, let's just maintain this for now. All right, I'll have your says right there on your screen. I'm going to read some feedback in just a bit. Hashtag back to nature. Why do men detest weave so much? And do you think they're justified? This is a huge conversation. There's even a group online um, that discusses this. I know Kilimani Moms, man, this is a big topic. Come in on it. Tell me what you guys think, OK? I'd really love to hear from you. OK, so look at this lady. Huh? Look at this. Some people are blessed. Like, let me be honest, guys. If you see my sister's hairs, my three sisters have, I think, the most beautiful hair I've ever seen. Mini lini moko my genetics, all right? But what do you guys think? Some people have gorgeous hair, and they're able to maintain it. Uh, what do you guys think? All right, Evans Best says, this is another reason I wouldn't advise too many black women to get tracks, even microbirds. This is Naomi Campbell. She's been trending for about five years now on this issue. You see this? She's missing a bit of kirea. She has a kapach there, and this is your hairline. So guys, when you see your, your mama with braids, when you see her with a weave, let me be honest with you, it's very difficult sometimes because your hairline actually gets damaged a lot by the chemicals, everything. Good morning, Kobe. A weave wearer has a false sense of beauty <laughs> and ultimately hates herself. No, I don't. Yes, I agree. There are some women who feel that the only way they look beautiful is when they have their straight, yakky hair in. These women have not come to love their naturally kinky hair and prefer a more European aesthetic. Come to think of it, people with natural hair sisters are down to earth, not afraid to get their hands dirty and care more about feminism and black rights. Wow! On the other hand, weaved up ladies or those with relaxer care more about labels looking fly and being promiscuous. You know what, uh, Moses, I'm going to get in touch with you. You're an intelligent man. I like your comment. It's full of... I like this comment, and I'm going to ask my guest what she thinks about it. Tony Fiano, love the way you are that way. I like that. Thank you, Tony. Jockey, Marcy says, I would prefer my natural hair to weaves. Absolutely. Let me be very honest with you, and I think I speak for a lot of women when I say this. A lot of us actually would prefer our natural hair. 
but sometimes you're just not gifted. Sometimes your hair is thin, you've relaxed it, you've gone through all that chemical stuff, and it just gets damaged. So this is a conversation we're going to be getting into very, very shortly. Natural or not? And if you want to transition, how do you go about it? All right? Because let me tell you, natural hair is actually a lot, uh, a lot harder to maintain, and it's a lot more expensive. But we're going to get into those details in a second. For now, here is your question of the day. Some chances to win. We'll throw in some uh, Aka, Aka wig. <laughs> Who was the first black woman to wear cornrows on television and in what year? Cornrows, as you know, ni matuta ziles meshukwa. Yeah? Who was the first black woman to wear cornrows on television and in what year? Go ahead and get the right answer for a chance to win some amazing merchandise and, of course, some money. Right, there's something wonderful happening right here in Nairobi. It's called Amadiva. It's a natural hair salon started by a beautiful woman called Maureen, causing ripples all over social media, she is. And we're going to talk to her a little bit, of course, about this new sensation. Is it a fad? Is it here to stay? Gentlemen, are you going, you know, Vision 2030? Will you just be seeing Afro kinky? It would be such a beautiful day, actually, if we did. I love it when you see a black woman with big natural hair that just looks gorgeous. We will get into that in just a second. And for now, let me give you some daily advice. Take a look. Of course she's going to say that. Do you know who that is? Tracy Ellis Ross is, she's an amazing actress, the, one of the stars of Blackish, a series on ABC. She's the daughter of Diana Ross. Yes, Diana Ross, I think, I don't know, God gave her this huge hair that she's passed on to her daughters. Let me be honest, yeah, not a lot of people have that kind of hair. Mm, but I like that, I like that daily advice. Love who you are. I know there's a song by India Ari that says, you know, I'm not my hair, I could be bald. Um, I could wear a wig, I could wear a weave, I could wear it natural, but I'm not my hair. I, and gentlemen, please remember that. We go through all this mess. My, one of my friends was asking me, how long do you spend at the salon? I was like, yeah, I'm like six hours. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, 20 minutes, me, I'm out of the barber and I'm good for the month. It's, it's crazy. But it's just one of the things about being a woman, and you guys need to appreciate that, all right? Oh, I really, really love that. Guys, guess what? We are going to post that on our social media platforms, which and we'll slow it down for you so that you can get some of these tips, all right? Now, I have a BFF on this show. I have three girlfriends. Halima, our beautiful editor. CK, our great director, all right? And then we have Usha. Usha, come. <laughs> the reason I'm, I'm throwing Usha under the bus today, she's like, Kobe, seriously, are you doing this to me? Hi, honey. How are you hi, doing? Hi. I'm good. good. Guys, this is Usha. Usha is the bomb. But you know why I'm throwing her under the bus? Is look at this. Usha, you've, you've had natural hair for a minute. Uh, yeah. Your whole life? No, not really. I had, um, I did put chemical in it in high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then all the way through, uh, till after college. Okay. Yeah. You, I am jealous about your hair. <laughs> it is so, so beautiful and rich and healthy. Thank Are you. you happy that you're natural now? Yes, I am. Now I am, yeah. but it's not always been like that. Uh -huh. Of course, there was at some point where I thought, um, you know, I wanted to have uh, long hair, straight hair, and it's a lot. It's a lot of hair. Yeah, the, yeah. So it's hard to deal with sometimes. It is actually hard, harder to deal with than this. Yes, yes. It Your is. opinion on weaves? <laughs> um, <coughs> well, <laughs> let me just stand over here, please. I know today I'm, you can go ahead, chastise me on social media. No, I, don't I actually mind. do. I actually don't mind weaves. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of a disadvantage to have nice hair because every time you put on weaves, people are like, "No, why would you do that? You have." Yeah. And then I think it ends up limiting you because. Um, Girls with short hair or girls who don't keep their hair long are allowed to do things like that. But if you have nice hair, if you have thick hair, then it's suddenly a crime. If okay. You do with, yeah. I love that. All right. Yeah. So listen, everybody. Usha and I, she actually helps us out with our question of the day. She's very, very smart. And she's the one. By the way, if you guys ever want to blame someone for that, <laughs> oh story, my God. this is the trick. No. <laughs> but today, we're going to throw in uh, we're gonna throw in something from Amadiva. We're going to throw in a natural 
makeover for one of a, a beautiful deserving woman out there from Amadiva. They're doing a great job. So we are going to throw that into our hamper, right? Yes. Yeah, and then we'll take this yeah. person out and make sure that they get all done up with Usha. Thanks, Usha. Thank you. You're the bomb. I love you. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> Yay. All, all right. right, so here's a look at this natural hair sensation before you meet my lovely guest and before we take you through the steps of what it takes to go natural. Take a look, everybody. My name is Lilian Maingi Barasa, the executive editor of The Salon Magazine. The Salon Magazine has been running in Kenya for the last 13 years, exclusively discussing hair and beauty matters. Over time, we have noticed change in hair trend, especially with the Kenyan woman. And as a Salon Magazine, the only authority, we don't have a choice but embrace the change. The African hair, has come back home. We have decided we are going to own our beauty as God created it. Um, my name is Michelle Talami. I am the founder of Marini Naturals. Um, this is Marini Naturals. So Marini is um, Kenya's first natural hair care line for women of natural hair like myself. So um, that's what I do and I'm happy to be here today. Amadiva is one of our stockists so you can actually find Marini Naturals right here in Amadiva Salon. So Salon Magazine is running a feature on three ladypreneurs who um, are all into the natural hair and skin industry and are doing good things for Kenya. We're just going to be featured in terms of what did we start doing natural hair products and how is the market perceiving our brands? Are they taking to them well or are they still into the imported brands? So that's, I think that's going to be interesting. My main interest in the three models I'm working with for this edition is one, they all wear their hair as natural. Two, they own products for natural hair. That means they are passionate about natural hair, they understand natural hair, and they want to help other women with the products. So they are knowledgeable, they are resourceful, and their products actually work, and they work well. I'm Diana Murakabesa. Actually, I have been bald for 14 years, and um, like three, three years ago is when I decided to grow my hair after I joined Amadiva and I joined Amadiva as a front desk uh, receptionist. And uh, actually, I've been told since I've joined the salon industry, I have to grow hair, no more baldness. I must say, from the time I joined Amadiva, I noticed clients who used to come in, used to have like relaxed hair. I'd not seen the natural hair as much. And um, after the Madiva, uh, after Madiva joined the natural, joined the, the natural way, I've gotten to see so so much of natural hair. I've come to love it because I can see actually Kenyans who really have long, long. I'd never known that you can meet a Kenyan lady with hair up to here and it's natural. Natural nowadays have, uh, I mean, their products that really work well with natural. There's nothing wrong with relaxing your hair. There's nothing wrong with wearing your wig. There's nothing wrong with wearing your wig. There's nothing wrong with your wearing your hair natural. The woman who has decided to transition from all these other kind of hair treatments to natural hair, she has finally realized she can be as beautiful as she is in her natural hair. I don't think it's here to stay. I transitioned four years ago. I am not about to change my hairstyle. More and more women today are embracing how they are naturally. Um, I think they've gotten tired of trying to conform into a certain type of beauty, um, you know, straight long hair. Not to say that that's not beautiful, um, it is, but they're just starting to realize they, God did not make no mistakes. If my hair is kinky, it's kinky, and I'm going to rock it like that. So with that in mind, they've also started embracing natural hair products. Natural hair is not cheap. Let somebody not kid you, I am going natural because it's cheaper to maintain my hair. Why? Because you must understand your hair, you must know which products work for your hair, you must know how to do your own home treatments, you must know when to go to the salon, you must know when to cut. All this must be done by somebody who understands natural hair. If 
you have to put color on your hair, number one, you have to like, your hair has to be like moisturized, like all the time. Like for me, I have to have moisture in my, on my hair like every other day. Because if it's not moisturized, it dries up and then it starts breaking. We are the place to come and have your natural hair done. Actually, I was asked in Nairobi, or even in Kenya, this is where guys come in, this is where we understand your hair, you come, we consult, and we know what works for your hair. We are happy to work with people like Amadeva Salon, who share the vision of the Kenyan woman by making her be more beautiful in her own natural state. I love Mori Murunga's story and, of course, the motivation for going natural. It is a big deal, but you know what? She's got a lot of women who are following suit. I'm so glad to have her on the show this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kobe. First of all, you look amazing. Can I just have you stand up? Guys, Thank look you. at this dress, <laughs> please. Oh, Thank my you. goodness, you look great. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Thank you for Thank being you. here this morning. It is so great to, to see the kind of work that you do at Amadiva. Um, and, of course, to hear from the clients, from, from uh, Salo Magazine and everything. Tell me your story, Maureen. When did you get into beauty uh, and beauty care? Wow. It's been a long time. So I'm actually not uh, naturally from a beauty background as a banker. Uh, but uh, in 2010, I decided this is my passion and it's something I wanted to do. So I got into the hair industry and uh, set up Amadiva. So we've been in existence since 2010. Uh, but two years ago, two little wonderful people joined my family, mm -hmm. two little girls, twins. And um, that prompted a change in direction. So based on seeing their hairs and wanting to be able to um, you know take care of them um, I actually started going natural myself yeah. uh, so they pushed me in that direction and here we are oh, yeah, it's been it. a year I th yeah I, I, I hear from a lot of moms um, you know it, it's a transformation when you are taking care of someone else's hair yes. life body <laughs> everything yes. um, let's take a few steps back mm -hmm. um, in Kenya specifically relaxing chemical weaves braid get a market my friendship it, yes. it is an it, it is an institution <laughs> it's a heritage right in yes. terms of how much how far we've come when it comes to hair um, where did this come from the, the relaxing the all of that uh, and w when do you think that Kenyan women started to change their mind about what they were doing to their hair there's always been a movement of Kenyan women who have uh, gone natural um, a lot of the women that I meet are actually they've been raised in families where the moms have relaxed hair and have had relaxed hair for years, decades even. Kalikit, Kwanza. Kalikit, <laughs> palm, I had it for 23 years, wow. my tie ad. And uh, these women have seen the effects on their, on, their, on their own hair, you know, damaged hairlines, weak hair, and subsequently have encouraged their children to embrace their own natural hair. So there's quite a few young women who've never actually relaxed their hair. And then, of course, there are those who are now embracing. And a lot of these women, some of them have been doing it for the last seven years. I would say it's been very strong in Kenya. Uh, in the last couple of years, we're now hearing about it. And I think it's social media that's driving that. Yeah. Um, but if you say in the last seven years, there's been a few women who've been consciously pushing towards this natural direction. Okay. So um, if you go on social media, there's loads. And it's Kenyan-based, in fact. Kenya is recognized as uh, the fifth most natural friendly uh, country in the world. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yes. That's unbelievable because there are many women in Kenya who are weaved to Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> From yes. synthetic to human to yaki to Indonesia to Indian. It is also the flip side of that coin. Yes. Um, when, you, when you talk about, of course, as a businesswoman owning a salon that now actually caters to this very um, certain demographic, um, you, of course, then block out, um, am I right, uh, a, a certain, you know, 
target well, market. Would you say that? No. Us guys, basically. Us guys no. are the fake hair. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, you're still my first love. Okay. Um, I would say when we started off, 100% of our business was focused on uh, relaxed hair, on extensions. We still do that uh, because the, you are my clients. Uh, I won't wake up one day and say, okay, Kwaheri, now yeah. we're doing natural hair. You're not welcome. Um, I would say right now it's about 70% uh, of my business still comes from the diehards, uh, the relaxed hair, um, the, the extensions, etc. And 30% comes from uh, natural hair. Okay. So that gives you an indication of how the market is. It's still not a complete shift. And I doubt it will ever be. Um, so there's still women who will embrace different types of hair. And that's the whole point of being a woman, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. You should have choice. All right, I love that. Yeah. Um, of course, speaking of choice, uh, one of the things I can certainly say, and especially after doing a little bit of research on what you do, is transitioning to natural is actually a lot harder than most people think. Yes. And it's actually <laughs> costly as well. Tell yeah. me a little bit about what it takes for a woman to transition from relaxed, chemical, all of that textured, permed, curly kit to going natural. How long does it take? What 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 are the cost implications? Okay, I think it's um it's it's one of those decisions that takes some time for people to decide. I want to go natural, and I've seen some women who are very abrupt. So they think it and they wake up and the next day they're natural. So they will just chop off whatever is existing on their head. But I think for most people, as it should be, it is a progressive change. Mm -hmm. So you start thinking about it, you start doing some research, you talk to a few people, you attempt like I did. Yeah. So I went natural during my pregnancy and then I woke up once the kids were here and I was like, I, I can't do this. Yeah. And I relaxed my hair and almost six months down the road is when I cut it again. So it, it, it can take a while and that's okay. You just have to decide. I think look for support and there's loads go on social media, do your own research, find out. Um, the other misconception I have is that I think a lot of people think it's it's easy. Let me go natural and tomorrow, Kobe, I'll look fabulous. Right, because you do. <laughs> yeah. You and Usha look so nice. <laughs> yeah. We we'll look fabulous, we're going to have great hair, um, and you don't think about all the things that it involves. Your hair texture, you're not used to it. It takes some time to start doing all the things that, um, you know, to maintain that hair. Yeah. So washing it, oiling it, uh, it needs moisture. Your natural hair, black people, we don't produce our own oils from our scalp, okay. so it tends to be dry, which means put moisture, put oils. Um, the cost implications, uh, for some people, it, it, it can be extreme. I think at the very basic, you need a great shampoo, a great conditioner, and a great oil. Bass. Yeah, and you're sour. Bass. Okay. But on the other extreme, you can decide to go all out and buy the best brands. And these cost a pretty penny. Yes, I, they do. Yeah, so it, d it depends. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there are, of course, um, the uh, DYIs and everything. You know, the first time I heard about what you're doing is on, was on social media. And these are the pictures that I saw. Uh -huh. Take us through what we're seeing and, and this 30-day campaign that really did take Nairobi by storm. Thank you. We enjoyed doing this campaign and the reason we did it Kobe mm -hmm. was because we wanted to showcase the versatility of natural hair we wanted to showcase how wonderful natural hair is and you know all the things that you could do uh, so I, I kept getting challenged by a lot of clients and they don't know what to do once they go natural uh, wow. what can the salon actually do if you did this yes and, and I'm coming to a salon <laughs> Wow, okay. We did all of these styles from scratch. Um, initially, when we started the campaign, it was really difficult to get people involved. But once we got going, um, we had loads of people volunteering okay. to actually come in and just showcase. Yeah. It's, it's a pride thing as well. Yes. It's an embracing of I'm black, beautiful, and I love the texture of my hair. You're transforming me, by the way. I just want you to know as we sit here. <laughs> You're guys, welcome. I'm changing. I just want everyone to know that I'm changing You're as welcome. we sit here. You're very because welcome. Because I can see actually it looks really beautiful. For me, I don't know why natural hair just seems messy, you know? And, and there is that misconception as well. Can you explain that? I think for a lot of people, it is because our texture of our hair is not even for mm -hmm. some people. There are 
Uh, this is the other thing about natural hair. The texture of hair depends uh, on genetic makeup. Right. So for some people, it's really curly and that looks really cute. Mm -hmm. um, and for other people, like myself, it's really kinky and my curl is Z and uneven. So that means if I just leave it, it's a shaggy look. Oh, yeah. And that's a style. It is a style too. It is a style. And for some people it looks nice it's based on style. your face shape and everything. Exactly. Okay. Now one of the things I can say is naturalisters are very opinionated people. Oh yes. And especially <laughs> on social media. Oh yes. And, it, and I've just found that it's a very thin line between, I guess, you know, natural, because there are natural weaves. Yes. There are women out there wearing beautiful natural weaves and wigs, looking fantastic, wearing afros, but the deep, deep naturalisters are like, no. You're not really natural. Tell me a little bit about this controversial conversation going on. Let me start by saying I am wearing a natural weave. This is a weave? This is a weave. So wow. my own hair is um, just at the front. Okay. Uh, but I have hidden the rest of my hair because I'm trying to grow it out. Yeah. So it, this is the versatility and the beauty of going natural. I love that. Yeah, it looks so amazing. You can, you can go this direction. But okay. as a result, the backlash. Um, so they are what we call naturalista Nazis, and they're very clear. <laughs> Do not put any fake hair on your head yeah. because that's crossing the line. In fact, don't put color. In fact, don't go anywhere near heat. If you are near a blow dryer, you have you have broken the ometa. Really? This is our code of existence, <laughs> and you cannot afford to do that. Right. Um, but I think with all things, it's moderation. It's what's good for you. I would say take care of your hair. Be good to your hair. Whatever you need to make it grow healthy and be strong, you need to do that. Um, but then, of course, the controversies exist. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a brand, we've experienced that backlash. Yeah. Yeah, so people attacking us for encouraging some practices that are not considered forte yes. in the natural world. So you will see that. And it's not a Kenyan thing, let okay. me just say that as well. Uh, big disclaimer, that's just around the world. There's, there'll always be those who are very deep in it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think you see this more um, because a lot of these women started and did it themselves. So they know how to take care of their hair. So if you start yeah. taking shortcuts in their view, yeah. that's not a good thing. All right. Um, I, I think that uh, every woman is an individual. Um, that, that's just my personal opinion. And, and women are allowed to do what they want uh, with their own hair and body and everything. Uh, before we walk over to your beautiful model, mm -hmm. um, there is something to be said about moms like yourself yes. who have now realized their mistakes and now are really trying hard to ensure that their daughters don't go through the same I guess hair breakage and all of that stuff. What can you advise moms who have young daughters, um, and they're and they're wondering, is it okay that that I permed her hair or I relaxed it? How do I start to transition her at this young age? What can you say to those moms? I will say that uh, in the salon, I meet a lot of mothers who've permed their hair, uh, their children's hairs, uh, relaxed it, and put chemicals because they find it unmanageable. Yeah. The texture is difficult. The child is crying, and so you go down that direction. But in my view, it's like giving a child beer, baby beer. Ah, yeah, it's just not, it, yeah. it doesn't work. So you, you, I, I think for a, it doesn't mean that if you've done it, there's no way of getting out of it. Mm -hmm. I think you have to come to a place where you want to give that child a chance. Because the thing about putting chemical on your hair, and especially on a young child, is you could easily damage their follicles, which means their hair won't grow at a certain point. And that child will never have had a choice in this. It's your decision. Yeah. So you're not giving this child any chance to decide, do I want chemical or not? It's mommy's decision. It's mommy wanting to be lazy. I think do some research. There's always a way to undo it. Um, okay. But I would say for kids, even below the age of 12, 14, please do not put chemicals on their head. All right. Let's walk over and find out, of course, what the options are out there um, in terms of product. And hi, I'm going to meet this beautiful lady. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Hi, you. Good to see you. you Come over here. There's a gentleman here who, who's, <laughs> who's also got natural hair. Uh, yeah, here he is. Here he is. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. Maureen, tell me about our model. So this is Lucy's 
natural hair. Oh, really? And, um, Sorry, Lucy. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to just touch it and look. My hands are clean. Don't worry. Uh -huh. Beautiful hair that she's got here. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the dream curl for everyone. Oh, yes. This is actually her hair with nothing done. It's just washed. Mm -hmm. And uh, she came straight to studio like that. Okay. Uh, but as you can see, it's got a natural pattern of a curl to it. Uh, this is much easier to maintain. This is not the norm, yeah. but this seems to be everyone's holy grail. I this love is what this. <laughs> I love this. Everyone wants this, yeah. but it's not the norm. It's just one type of natural hair. Wish okay. we had uh, the ability to bring much more, yeah. uh, but we decided to come with Lucy. She was available, yeah. and uh, this is the hair we're going to use today. All right. Um, let's talk a little bit about how to maintain this. I can see a little bit of product. What yes. can you say um, in terms of your clients um, taking them through what they need to do, especially when you start with them, love? Um, all I can say, natural hair, when you compare natural hair to relaxed hair, mm -hmm. is that relaxed hair or straight hair, its cuticles are straight, lying to each other, straight, so it's easy not to allow any moisture yeah. to get out. Okay. But for curly hair, anywhere that there is a, a bend or a curl, yeah. the cuticles open more. Uh, so take us slowly, my friend. <laughs> take us slowly. This is, we're learning. We're learning. Okay. okay, start again. Hold it again and take, take us through that. Mm -hmm. Okay, like uh, assuming the hair was straight, yeah. the cuticles lie from the roots to the ends. Okay. So they protect the hair. Once you, once you do something like a treatment or a conditioner, mm -hmm. the cuticles open automatically. Oh. The conditioner gets in the hair then the cuticles close themselves automatically. Okay. Um, with relaxed hair, the cuticles are straight mm -hmm. and more intact. For curly hair, anywhere there is a curl, yes. the cuticles bend so they open a bit. Okay, when they the open, way God meant it. Yes, the way God <laughs> meant it. <laughs> yeah. when, when they open, um, the hair loses moisture okay. through the opening. That makes the hair dry. That's why you have to keep moisturizing natural hair. Yeah. And in this heat, my goodness, right? Tell dry. me a little bit about your hair, honey. How long have you had it? Uh, I've had my natural hair for all of my life. Yeah, really? Though I kept uh, changing it up. Okay. I kept it short at some point and decided to grow it out about two and a half years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. It looks beautiful. It looks Thank beautiful. you. You're going to take us through some stuff. You can start, by the way. Maureen, here's the thing. Yes. Um, for If you want to transition, is it easier for you to just shave and start from scratch? Um, and how long does it take to get this kind <laughs> of hair? Because I think that's the problem with a lot of people, the impatience. And if I, if I can get this in a weave, yeah, I'll, I'll go this way. I think those, you just answered the question, yeah. Kobe. It's patience. Okay. So it really depends on what sort of uh, personality you are. Uh, if you're okay with, uh, you know, just going natural immediately, then cut off your hair. But if you're scared, like many of us, including myself, yeah. then do it slowly. Transition. Grow out your chemical hair while the natural hair is um, coming out. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are options, such as these weaves. Okay. So th that can also give you an idea on how you're going to look like in a few years. So, I love it. Yeah. T take us through what it takes to maintain a natural hair weave. Is it, because I can tell you very honestly, this, guys, let me just tell you about this weave I'm wearing. I literally can jump into a pool, I can shower, and come to work. It curls naturally. Yes. It's Indonesian. <laughs> don't, don't. Yeah, but I, it's just that convenient. Yeah. How easy it is to maintain the natural? It's not. It's exactly <laughs> like taking care of your own hair. Really? So let's just be honest. Uh, it does give you a good idea of what it means to have natural hair. Mm -hmm. uh, because of its curls, the tight curls, it means it's prone to tangling. Which means, even before I came here, there was conditioner that I had to put in my hair. Yeah. I had to use water to put moisture back in it and straighten it out. So it does tangle. I, I could have walked in here with dreadlocks. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it, but you it, look it, beautiful today. Thank you. Very, thank very you happy very indeed. Much. We're looking at some product here. Yes. Um, take us through, because I can actually see, guys, you should see, if, if Becca, you can get this. Honey, can you turn your head a little bit? <laughs> I just want you to turn this way, just a little bit. I just want you guys to see the roots, huh? Can you see how beautiful her hair is? Um, for you to get this kind of moisture, throughout a whole day. Do you have to walk around with some one of these? It's like spraying spray yourself. <laughs> <Not really. laughs> I, 
I think the market, this is a good thing about uh, being natural now. Yeah. The market has so many products, so many offerings. Um, for Dennis to lock in that moisture, so yes, natural hair needs water, okay. but you can lock in the moisture and what you need is any one of these. We brought with us a bunch of natural oils and natural butters. Yeah. These are unrefined. Take me through them, um, So mm -hmm. we brought sheer butter and we brought, um, this is a mixture of sheer and castor oil and this is just pure sheer oil. Okay. And the reason we brought these two is because they go very well with uh, Lucy's hair. Mm -hmm. So depending on the type of hair you have, the holy grail for, um, in the natural world, everyone either uses one of two oils. So it's either coconut or sheer. Really? Yes. Yeah, so it, it's just, it depends on, you know, what your tastes are. Mm -hmm and what you want to have on your hair. Okay. And these things don't have to be expensive and they don't have to break the bank. You right. can literally go to the supermarket, food section, get some oil, get some coconut oil, get some olive oil. You have something that will seal water in your hair. You do need water. Okay. So every naturalista, this has is your to have this. Yes. Guys, water. here it is. You have water. to have this. You have to have water. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing is, because our hair is constantly losing water, as Dennis has said to you, the cuticles are open when you're natural. You have to keep returning in the water. Otherwise, your hair is dry and unmanageable, and you won't enjoy it. Wow. I'm so, learning so much. I'm learning so, so much. I hope Nimrod Tabu is watching this <laughs> because he... he um, is he a naturalist? No, <laughs> well, he is kind of my boss when it comes okay. to uh, image and everything. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can transition. Yeah, yeah. Please, you're welcome. I, I love it. Now, one thing I have to talk about, and I'm going to ask both of you, um, in terms of um, your love life, <laughs> um, do you believe that men prefer your natural look? Um, what has been your experience with, with guys? You married? Sorry, I'm I'm married. Okay, cool. So uh, you can tell us about your husband. My my <laughs> husband actually loves the natural yeah. look. He actually <laughs> loves it. He finds it very, as someone said earlier on your Facebook page. Yeah, it's very. If I, he finds someone with natural hair very real. Just real down to earth. Down to earth. Even real. me, I'm down to earth though. <laughs> I'm also real to some extent. <laughs> and, and you see, Kobe, the what? misconception. Yeah. What you project just because you're wearing this hair. People think I'm um, somebody's a social already light. <laughs> somebody's already judging you. Somebody already thinks, oh, there's Kobe, the socialite. Socialite. Guys, no. I'm down to earth even if I'm wearing this. What can you say from a man's perspective about the way men are so vocal about what we have on our head? What business is it of yours? Um, <laughs> according to me and on behalf of other men at large, um, we prefer natural hair, because ah, natural really hair is real. Is, is real. <laughs> yeah. Natural hair is real. Um, if someone puts a wig on, a long wig that reaches there, it's so automatic that it's not hers and it looks fake at some point. Sorry to say so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I absolutely agree with you. But what can you say um, overall about this very opinionated, I, I guess, and it's a Kenyan thing I feel sometimes, um, that men especially are so opinionated. They formed a group on Facebook, on Facebook Maui. They are meeting. You know, <laughs> they have AGMs. What's going on? Ooh. They're attacking women. <laughs> exactly. What uh, can you say, Maureen? I, I, I would say as a woman, you have to believe you're beautiful with or without the hair. Yeah. Uh, if you're using hair as a way to create versatility in your style, that's your choice. Uh, if you're using the hair to hide, then maybe you should look at what's the reason you're using that hair. Okay. Uh, I've seen loads of women, myself included, I change so quickly and so often it depends on what's happening in my lifestyle at the moment what am i doing what am i feeling comfortable with this hair doesn't define me if it all fell off it doesn't define me right. but that's a process it's taken me a good i wouldn't say how many years yeah. but let's just say decades to actually get to the point where my hair won't define me okay. i certainly could never have walked out of the house even three years ago without long lashes hair yeah so this is this is a big change for me do you love it i absolutely adore it and the best thing is men think i'm now low maintenance so that's great oh <laughs> that's the misconception yes you think we're this, high is maintenance. <laughs> this is the misconception <laughs> i mean it costs way more okay but for some reason it, it just gives the impression that you're more as he said down to earth mm -hmm. you're more real you're more willing to get your hands dirty not true 
Okay, so <laughs> this is what I want to ask as we wind up. Um, for someone like her, um, who's got natural hair, it seems to me that she would have to visit the salon quite often. Whereas, for many women, we don't have the time or the money. Um, what can you say about the f amount of visits that you have to uh, come to the salon, come to Amadiva, to maintain this look, if, if you can do it yourself? Uh, for a lot of women, I will say, especially naturalistas, because there's been not a clear understanding on how to take care of the hair, a lot of them do it themselves. Mm -hmm. But if you do have the option to come to salons, because now we're improving, we're getting better, we're learning, um, I would say once every month mm -hmm. to at least do a deep conditioning uh, using, you know, let's analyze your hair, let somebody else have a look at your hair, trim out any edges that have grown out, mm -hmm. just give it some maintenance. Yeah. Um, I would say once a month is good enough. The rest Amazing. of the time, do it yourself. Okay, I'm gonna throw this question to you. It, um, how expensive per month is it to maintain your hair? It's actually very cheap. Okay. Because um, I use natural products, mm -hmm. and once you get what works for your hair type, yeah, um, you actually don't have to buy a hundred different things. Mm -hmm. I don't spend much on my hair. Okay. I just do it, as Maureen mentioned, a good deep conditioning once a month. Um, and the rest is water, a bit go. of glycerin here, okay. and some butters. You must have a lot of pillowcases. <laughs> <laughs> Satin bonnet, satin bonnet. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Are you going to throw in um, a makeover for one of our beautiful, deserving women? Please, Maureen. Do you know what, Kobe, yeah. for you? Yes. Yay! <laughs> yes. Awesome. So yes. a very lucky viewer right here on AM Live gets a wonderful makeover from Amadiva. You're located at, at 14 Riverside and at Prestige Plaza. Oh, really? Yes. You have two locations. We have two locations. Prestige Plaza is right here in Nairobi off of Ngong Road, y'all. And then uh, 14 Riverside, just after Chiromo, it's right there. Can't miss it. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful place that you have. And I love your girls as well. Thank They're you. They're all naturalistas. <laughs> They're all naturalistas. They're really awesome. Thank you so much for being here. And for men, yeah, this mohawk with like a dye. We'll talk about color next time because color is a big topic. It is. Color it is a big topic. It Maureen, is. thank you for being here. Thank you, Cole. And thank you thank for thank motivating you for so many women out there. Guys, so. it's not as hard as it looks. If you want to transition, this is your time. We're getting lots and lots of feedback.